Hey guys! You guys are about to get really tired of seeing my face over the next 30 days. You probably haven't seen my post earlier. It's not like you guys stalk my page. I know you don't. Um, but um, there's been a challenge posed by my company to post a live video. No requirements around it, no length of time, no anything, but a live video for the next 30 days every single day. And, um, hey girl, what's going on? And so, um, hey Ala. So, I'm going to be posting uh, a different video every single day for the next 30 days. And I have a bunch of topics that I've written down that are interesting to me. And no, they're not going to all be about ketones. In fact, probably most of them won't be. Um, they can be anything really. They don't even have to be about the keto diet. They, they can be, I've got all sorts of things that are interesting to me that I jotted down that I plan to talk about, um, but I also want your feedback too. I posted posed a question um, uh, on my feed not too long ago, asking for ideas of what would be interesting for you to hear about. Like, what would make you want to click the little button to watch this video, like you're watching me right now? Um, I'm, I'm legit curious. I posted it in my keto group too, so. Um, you know, I've got a handful of ideas and today I'm going to keep it short and of course because it's the five o'clock hour and I'm going to have to leave soon to go pick up the kids from daycare. Um, but I wanted to tell you a short little blurb using my husband as an example. So a lot of you guys know Jim. Um, my husband Jim is a type 1 diabetic. He was diagnosed in his mid-20s um, so he didn't have it through his childhood and um, we didn't know each other when he was diagnosed, but um, if you're not entirely familiar with what diabetes actually is, I know we've all heard of it, but what is it? Um, it basically, if, you, if you're type 1, it means your pancreas doesn't work. It doesn't produce insulin. So when you um, have high glucose foods or high carb foods, you don't get that insulin response and your blood sugar stays like extremely elevated. Um, so... Any of you guys who have known Jim or who do know him know that he's he's had his share of struggles, um, his ups and downs, and most people probably do, especially when they're diagnosed as an adult. You go through this whole period of um, complete denial. Um, there's a lot of change that you have to start accepting, and your pancreas doesn't just die right away, you know, overnight. It doesn't just stop working, so you kind of have this little honeymoon period um, where things are still working, and you feel like, oh, well, you know, it's not all that bad. I can kind of still eat what I want and do what I want to, um, you know, and then you, you also have, you have to give yourself insulin. So you have this little like insurance policy where you can still do whatever the heck you want. Um, and if you guys, for those who know Jim, you know, he, his diet's not the best. Like the kid loves French fries. He could sit and eat a whole bag of chips and salsa. Um, and, and we're all trained to almost like feel like we need those carbs. Like, you know, you got a hangover, you don't feel good, man, I need a chicken biscuit combo with cheese and some french fries, like I need some carbs to soak up the alcohol. Or, you know, if you're not feeling well, you eat your bananas and your bread and, you know, that's supposed to make you feel better. Like we, we're all trained to feel like if, if you need to go run a marathon, I'm serious about this, if you need to go run a race, you carb load the night before and you eat a bunch of pasta. You know, so it, he's trained to think that too, even though he's diabetic and he just I can't think of how many times in the years that I've known him, he'll say, man, I, I just, I need, I need a carb. I need something. I don't, I don't, I don't feel right. And sometimes he really does, but that's because he has these spikes and valleys in his blood sugar. Um, and he'll need, you know, a couple nights ago, he did, you know, eat a bowl of ice cream to bring his blood sugar back up. Hey, Amanda, <laughs> your exact order from mine too. That and a Gatorade, some Advil, a goodies headache powder good to go, right? Yeah, that was in my like early 20s and um, <laughs> no amount of any of that stuff could fix me <laughs> in my late 30s. <laughs> but anyway, so 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 Jim's uh, struggle with regulating his blood sugar um, and with just dealing with his, um, with diabetes, it, it can be a struggle for him and he has, um, he has made a huge shift over the last few years of not consuming so much alcohol in one sitting. He kind of knows what his body can deal with. And sometimes he still doesn't. But if he were to sit around and th drink three or four beers, he'd be screwed. Like, it's a bad night. And I've already, I, I'm not dealing with it. Like, I'm not taking you to the hospital. I'm not staying up with you. 
you can be sick by yourself, you know, whatever it is, but his body just can't, and it, and it processes alcohol differently. And he'll think about his food choices sometimes, but it's not consistent. And so, you know, you guys know I've been doing keto, which is perfect. I'm telling you it's perfect for diabetics type one or type two. Um, so I've been doing it for just about six months now. In another week or so, I'll, I'll post my six month progress photo. I'm excited about that. I, I can't wait to see it and like take all the measurements and stuff. Um, but I've been doing it for six months and there's a handful of times where Jim has, um, you know, come to me and said, you know, I'm really thinking about trying this with you, you know, full on, like full time because, you know, he'll eat the dinners with me and he'll make dinner for me uh, and different meals. Like, cause he knows he's been paying attention to what's good and what's not good for keto. Um, he's having a hard time wrapping his head around eating a lot of fat, um, healthy fats, but you know, as a type one diabetic, I've just been had my fingers crossed, like waiting for him to jump on board with me. He's supportive of me, um, but it, it's better for him than for me even. And and I've learned the hard way many times that you can't will someone to do something that they're not ready to do. And you can't talk them into doing something that they're not ready to do. And you can't want it more than they can. It's never going to work. So I just, you know, support him the best that I can. And, you know, I've, I've been excited every time he's told me, you know, man, I'm getting close. I'm thinking about, you know, this, this keto thing sounds like a thing I could do. And so finally, a couple of weeks ago, um, he said, okay, I'm in. Tell me what to eat for all my meals. Like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try it. And, um, you know, it's music to my ears. I mean, when you've seen him go through some of the stuff that I've seen, I'm just like literally praying for him to, 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 to go out on a limb and jump on board with me. And so he did. And for, it was, it was a good six to seven days, like fairly strict. And when I say fairly strict, I mean me strict, meaning I don't track and do all that stuff. I just know what foods contain what. And you guys, I'm telling you, it's almost like a light switch for him. Um, he, yeah, he, he stayed on board for like six, seven days and he took zero short acting insulin during the day. Zero, which is amazing. Like that blow, I'm, I'm getting cold chills like talking about it. He took the long, at, uh, long acting insulin at night. He still has to take that at night. I mean, his pancreas is legit dead, you guys. Um, but he, in those five, six, seven days, like he... <laughs> He took none, none during the day, none of the short acting. And I, what I need to do is go back and I don't know if this would resonate with you guys, but I need to ask him how much he would normally take during a given day. And it depends on what he, what he would eat, but literally just removing those major carbs and sugars from his life. And he just ate the same things that I did for like six, seven days, cut it out completely. The other cool thing that happened for him, um, he would check his blood sugar in the morning. Um, I told him if he's going to, and he doesn't, he's not good about checking his blood sugar. He, he's kind of a stubborn diabetic. Let's call him a stubborn person. Yeah, Jim, you're going to watch this later and you know, you're a stubborn person. So am I. Um, but he is, he's a stubborn diabetic. He, um, you know, kind of thinks he, he knows it all and can feel when his body is in trouble and he can't always. Um, sometimes I can tell before him, but, um, so I'm like, you got to check your blood sugar all day long, get, you know, five, six different times. I want to know what, what it is before you eat, after you eat, all that stuff. And in the morning fasted, which just means on an empty stomach, like overnight, he checked his blood sugars and he was steady for like the first time ever. And not only was he steady, it was in a low, reasonable number. He, he, his blood sugar had dropped down fasted to 130 when typically it's in the 180s and 190s, which is really pretty significantly high. One week, you guys, one week of change. Like that to me blows my mind. Um, and he's going to continue it, but I don't think quite as strict. I think he's, you know, and, may, and he may change his mind. This is again, back to that whole conversation of you can't make somebody do something that they're not ready to do. And, you know, in that first week on, on keto, you really kind of, um, you do go through periods of not feeling so great because you're shifting your entire body and how it works. And so he did struggle with a little bit of that, bit of that like feeling a little lethargic. I'm like, look, just drink more water. He started taking electrolytes. And I kept saying, you know, eat an avocado a day, like get your fat up. That was what his problem was. But um, I, it blows my mind. And so this is... For type two, I have a handful of customers, ketones customers, who are also type two diabetics. 
and they've seen some significant um, changes in their life. I've had um, A1C numbers drop two and three points in a very short period of time, um, reduction of insulin usage altogether, getting off medication. I mean, and this is just a handful of people. Can you imagine what removing these sugars from your diet can do for other people? But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I did get Jim's permission to, you know, talk about his, uh, you know, personal choices and diabetes and everything. But um, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And if you have any questions, let me know. Maybe <laughs> he just walked in and back out. Maybe he'll be bold enough at some point to jump on camera with me. Maybe not. He may have run away before I said that, before he could hear me. But um, that would be cool, too, if he, you know, jumped on and said a few things about it at some point but um I do have to knock off of here and, and go get the go get the kids but I wanted to share that that really cool story with you guys and it's literally just making a few shifts in diet could make that big of an impact in such a short period of time so think about it and if you haven't go watch the freaking magic pill on Netflix do it okay Yes, Heather, it would be amazing, right? So we'll talk him into it. I'll, you know, have to put a poll or something out there. Basically, you know, have everybody chanting, Jim, 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 something. We'll get him on here. He's not going to like that idea at all. Okay, I'll see you guys later. I got to run.